Are your family digital photos a nightmare for you? You're not alone, but there are options out there and I'm gonna help you avoid the pitfalls when choosing a photo management program. But first, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified when I upload a new video about saving family memories. Hi, I'm Molly Bartelt, owner of Pixology, where we've organized millions of photos over the past 10 years. We've learned a thing or two on the way. We're gonna cover what you need in a photo management program, and then we're gonna touch upon two things you really need to know before ever importing pictures into that program. And last, we're gonna go over 30 different options for organizing your pictures. If this is helpful to you, please give the video a thumbs up because it'll help other people find this information as well. There are a lot of things that photo management programs can do for you, but there are four things that I think are essential to getting control of your photo collection. The first one is you need to be able to organize pictures in folders or in albums. Sometimes programs call them folders, sometimes they're albums, sometimes both words are used, but this is really important to be able to sort your pictures into folders or albums. Next, you need to be able to edit the photo's metadata. Metadata are things like the date taken of a picture or comments or a description and adding tags to a photo. This is really important when you scan old pictures and you want to put the original date on it or you want to say who's in the picture so someone else years down the line will know who's who. The third thing you need to be able to do with your program or your solution is you need to be able to easily back up your photos. Most programs have some sort of backup and you're going to want to check that out and make sure the program can do that for you. Lastly, you need a really good user interface. It's called the user experience design, the UX. This means when you open that program, you love using it. It makes sense to you. You've figured out what you need to do where, and you like using it. It's important because I really think that when you're using a program, you need to love it because you need to use it routinely, regularly. So you remember what's what in the program, where you left off, and the tips and tricks of using it. So make sure that you love opening that program and working in it. Now, when you think about your digital photo collection, do you have duplicates? I'd love to know. Leave a yes or a no in the comments below. I ask about duplicates because this leads us into pitfall number one. If you have a lot of duplicate photos, you're going to want to use a duplicate photo finding program before you ever import them into anything else. Duplicate finding programs work best when you just have your pictures in folders. If you want to know more about these kind of programs that will find your duplicates, click the link up above. The second pitfall I want to tell you about is this. If you do a ton of work in a photo management program, like editing the pictures, physically changing you know, the hue, cropping it, or editing the metadata, changing the dates or adding tags and descriptions, that work may not be visible or even accessible outside of the program. Two problems with this. Number one, if you share those photos with somebody, they may not be able to see the work that you did with the picture, who was important in the photo and what the correct date was. Also, if you change computers and you have a problem with the software being installed on the new computer, all of the work that you did to edit that picture is in the program on the old computer. Sometimes that does not transfer to the new computer and you will lose all of your work. You may still have the original pictures, 
but the work may be detached from those photos. So be very careful. There are many photo management programs out there and I can't possibly review them all, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure that when you work with a picture, that the information you put in the metadata or the changes that you make to it, that they are able to be viewed and enjoyed by you and everybody else you want outside of the program. I'm afraid you're probably already swimming in the third pitfall. Chances are, as we go through the list, you are gonna see that you have pictures in multiple programs already. At the end of the day, what you really want is to have your pictures on your phone, backed up to iCloud or Google Photos, and then one other photo management program. You need to get rid of the rest. All right, it's time to dive into all those options for you to organize your photos. I do wanna tell you to stick around to the end because I have a secret to share with you as well as what we recommend here at Pixology. When I talk about photos and organizing photos, I do include videos in this. All of these programs do allow you to store videos as well. There are four types of photo management options out there. The first is simply your file manager. On a PC, it is the file explorer, and on a Mac, it's the finder. Many people organize their photos and videos in folders, and that is very simple. It's not always that fun, but it is uh, very structured and you have total control over your pictures. Within File Explorer or Finder, you may have installed Dropbox, OneDrive, iCloud, and even Google Drive. These are all potential photo management options for you as well. When they're in your File Explorer or Finder, they are syncing up to the cloud so that you have them backed up and possibly even accessible on your smartphone. Our second category is online photo management. If you have a smartphone, chances are you are using Apple Photos or Google Photos to back up your smartphone pictures. And if you're not, you might wanna turn that on. Apple Photos are stored in iCloud.com where you can go and actually look at pictures, share them, and download them. And the same is true for Android. Your pictures are being backed up to the Google Photos website, and you can also share, view, and download your pictures too. The thing with the photo managers for your phone pictures is they store everything. And we don't necessarily wanna save all that's on our phone camera roll, right? So sometimes people save their family photos in a separate place from Google Photos or Apple Photos. That's the one instance where I could see you using two of these photo management options. Also in the online category, we have Amazon Photos, which is popular because it comes free for people who subscribe to Amazon Prime. There's Memory Web, good for the family genealogists, Photo Bucket, which you might want to avoid, and then we have Adobe Lightroom, the online version. Our favorite online storage is forever permanent storage, and that's because the company guarantees to migrate your pictures, videos, and documents to the newest technology for your lifetime, plus 100 years. It's the simplest option. Flickr, SmugMug, and 500px market themselves as places to store your photo collection as well. Then we do have some people who insist that Shutterfly or Snapfish are photo management options that are online as well. I disagree because if you don't continually purchase items from those websites, they will delete your pictures. And that wraps up the online options. The third category are the file viewer programs. These are programs that allow you to look at your actual files and folders right on your computer. The changes that you make may be applied directly to the digital photo or in a copy of the photo or a sidecar file. Examples include Adobe Bridge, Photoshop Elements, Windows Photos App, XNViewMP, 
and Picasa, which is still available out there. The last category is the full photo management programs. These usually have somewhat of a learning curve and you've got to use these routinely so you can remember how to use it. You do not want to let, you know, three years go by, come back to the program and try to figure out what you were doing in it, okay? This is serious commitment when you choose a full photo management program. With these programs, you import all of your photos and you manage it from within the program. You can edit your pictures, you can crop them, you can add the metadata that you want. And when you are interested in doing something with the pictures, like making a photo book or sharing them, it's best to export them from the program. A great example of a photo management program is Apple Photos that comes installed on a Mac computer. We have recommended Milio as a program because it has a beautiful interface and it really is fun to work with your pictures inside of it. There is a learning curve and again, you've got to use it routinely. Other photo management options include Fastone, Forever Historian, Magix, SysTweak, Eagle.cool, Phototheca, I think that's how you pronounce it, PikaJet. There is Zoner Photo Studio X. And at one time, Movavi had a photo manager. I couldn't find the link for this video, but this is also something to be aware of that these companies can come and go. So it's a little nerve wracking to choose a photo manager and depend upon it, knowing that one could go out of business at some point. There also are advanced programs like Adobe Lightroom, the classic version, ACD Systems, Photo Mechanic, and Digicam. We have gone through 30 plus photo management options. They're not all winners, okay? And I really need you to know this secret that we've learned here. It is not the program that is gonna make or break your photo organization efforts. It is the habit of working with your pictures routinely. And that's why our go-to choice for saving photos is taking the pictures that we love, our family photos from our phone and saving them to folders on our computer. And then we take those photos and we upload them to Forever Permanent Storage, a company that is known and trusted to be a reputable place for storing your pictures to easily share, make photo books and other gifts, as well as pass your memories on to future generations. There are a lot of moving parts to organizing digital photos. I would love to talk with you if you are overwhelmed and you need a little help. See the calendar link below and schedule a time to chat with me. That's it for now. Thank you so much for being with me today. We'll see you the next time.